Hey guys, welcome to another video of work with me in real time. Um, I'm working on the Kaisla sock and the 52 weeks of sock. And as you can see, I'm wearing the same sweater as my last work with me video because I'm filming it the same day. Um, and the Kaisla looks like this. Okay. Um, this is the... Please excuse my stomach, okay? It's growling. And this is like the, everything you need to know. Um, and I'm just using this as a bookmark. And the Kessler sock is number 33. And it's by Rachel Coopy um, on page 165 if you have the book. Um, and how do you show this? And this is a more detailed photo, but they're both really, really tiny. So, yeah. And um, to avoid copyright, I guess, um, I'm just gonna close it. And this is the yarn I'm using from Lavender Fiber Company. Well, you can't really see the fiber color right there. It's there, okay. Um, and this is the base dreamy sock on the colorway Nuri um, or Nuri if you're if you're not saying it the Korean way, I guess. And this is the um, fiber content. It's a four ply yarn, but it's more like a fingering in my opinion, and it's four hundred meters per one hundred grams. Or here you could say you can see it's 435 yards per 100 grams um, I looked up the meters and I could pretty much tell these days um, how many yards are in meters yeah. so we love that and this is what it looks like oops let me get that piece of hair out this is what it looks like all knit up and it looks really nice it's it looks very similar to Sachi but except Sachi doesn't have um, I think the blue tones and the green tones um, of the yarn I think it's Sachi is like um it's like pink yellow Picking yellow and white, I think. But this one has like purple and blue tones as well. Um, yeah. And this is what it looks like all kicked up. It looks very soft in the cake, but when it's knit up, it looks a little different. It looks more like the hink or skein. Um, but with more color variation, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, I really like how it knits up. It's very nice. So I'm, I already did the, um, the cuff, the, what's this called? The heel flap. And I did the heel turn as well. Um, so I'm doing the gusset basically. Oh, and this is what it looks like on the inside. It's a slip stitch pattern. Um, it's the same one at that um, Hohi Locatelli uses in the riverbed pattern in Fit Two Weeks Socks. It's in there. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna keep working on this. Um, and you can work on something with me too. Sorry, my cats are fighting each other.
and um, there's nothing special about the heel flapping gusset. It's just um, pretty much the same as the riverbed. And I looked through um, the whole book to see, or not the whole book, but I, I flipped through a few of the patterns and a lot of the um, ones that have heel flap and gusset has like the same slip stitch heel flap, which I think is pretty interesting. Like why does everyone use the same heel flap? But uh, I think there are a few patterns that use uh, German short row heels and um, what, what was it? It wasn't the afterthought heel. I don't think any of the patterns use a flegal heel. Um, I can't remember. Well, I think the majority use a heel flapping gusset in this book, but there are only a few that does German Chevro. I just can't... Well, I haven't worked them, so I just don't know or remember which one has it. Um, and I'm using um, 9 inch circulars for this um, because it's just easiest for me, honestly. Um, and I find that I can use Continental um, if I'm using a like wool yarn, I guess. Basically not 100% mohair because that one's too slippery, but for this, it's or for this yarn, like superwash merino, it's pretty okay. So I probably can um, continue using Continental for socks um, on nine inch circulars. I know I said that they're like nine centimeter circulars, but that's like literally impossible. Um, so yeah, I think they're like, so the cable is five centimeters and the, the needles are also five centimeters. So that's like 15 centimeter uh, circulars, I think. Yeah, 15 centimeter circulars. And um, I tried on the, this section was like the cuff section. Um, I tried it on and for some reason, it's like so much looser than what I thought. And I'm making the smallest size and I feel like I should have gone down. Um, a few repeats or something because it's like way too loose for my comfort um, 
because I think the ankle would just continue to, um, what's it called? Like fall down. Uh, it'll just continue to slip down, and I don't really know if that's the look I want. Um, I know I can just uh, sew in an elastic or something. But alas, I might have to do that actually. I'm at the 11 minute mark. Um, I think I'll just do this for 20 minutes and then we'll see where we're at. So for the gusset, I'm on the no decrease row. And then now I'm on to the decrease row because I just finished the- oh! I just flung my um, my stitch marker beginning around. Okay, I really can't get it. I'll just get it later. So I'll just use a different one. And this is my little stitch marker box. So I just grabbed the gold one. Um, actually, I, sh I should just grab a silver one because I don't want it to change color. Um, and the silver ones don't tarnish, which is, you know, better than the gold ones. But now that it's colder, I don't. My hands don't sweat, so I find that I don't tarnish the gold ones anymore. Cause in summer, they're really tarnished, like really badly. And I find that this pattern doesn't really use stitch markers all that much, just for beginning around. So. Um, but it still doesn't tell you to remove your previous uh, stitch markers or anything, so that's kind of like annoying. I don't think any of the patterns even tell you to remove stitch markers, or maybe, or I think. Some of them tells you to remove it, but they don't say remove all of them. And um, place new stitch markers or place them in a new placement. I mean, they tell you to do it, but you know, sometimes you still have the old stitch markers on and you don't know, and I don't know what to do with them, but I think you just take them off. Um, unless you need it for, um, to see where your pattern starts. Because sometimes that's helpful. I know I complain a lot about this book, but, yeah, I mean... Oh, and for the Kaisla pattern, um, the foot and toe section is the same section. And I was like so confused because um, for the second sock, it says to um, uh, knit the foot and toe the same as the first 
sock, but then there's only the foot section and there's no toe section. So I was like, where is the toe section? But the toe section is part of the foot section. So yeah, kind of like not intuitive, a little confusing because the riverbed has a toe and f separate toe and foot sections. Same with like the heel fat, the, uh, heel turn, gusset, you know, they're all different. Okay, I thought I did something wrong. The stitches on this side are so much looser, I don't know why. I want to drink tea, but I didn't make any tea. Um, oh my gosh, was I out of frame the whole time? Well, that sucks. It's so hard to tell what, when I'm in frame or not. Hmm, so sorry. Um, but hopefully you're also working on something so you don't have to like pay attention to like what i'm doing but like i'm a your knitting companion i guess for when you want to knit i, I don't know And I don't know when I can um, film a podcast because um, I won't have time on the weekend to film the podcast. And I think this will, this episode um, will probably go up on like Sunday or Monday or something. So, I mean. I don't think I'll have it lined up or anything. I was gonna film it today, but um, the sun is already kind of low in the sky, even though it's only freaking. It's kind of early still, but yeah. I don't like losing light, so. I don't 
don't know if I can film a podcast this weekend, actually. And like, Christmas is coming up so fast. Like, scary fast. I keep messing up though. But it's really easy to mess up this pattern. No, I'm out of frame, but like, uh, I wouldn't be able to um, do it otherwise. Oh, I think I fixed it. Oh, my gosh. After I'm done with this round, um, I'm gonna stop filming. Because, uh, yeah, it's already past the 20 minute mark. And I want this episode to be shorter than the last one. Because, low key, it was way too long. I don't know why it's so hard for me to read the stitches on this side. And I find that um, most of the patterns only have like two sizes, but they're like, I don't know, like if you're knitting it for um, a guy that has like huge feet, like size 10 or above, like th they would never be able to fit these socks. 
So um, if you have big feet, you're definitely gonna have to add more repeats of a pattern like this, or just add, um, what do you call it? Add however many stitches, I guess. But then like the heel would still be the same as I think. I think all the heel flaps and gussets are kind of the same. Um, so that would be fine, I think. your instep would be like much bigger, I think. Or at least the pattern part will be bigger. I mean, that's what I did for uh, the riverbed um, socks. And those fit like really nicely because I made them smaller than it's less dish counts than this one. Um, yeah. By like 12 stitches. So I'm like, oh, maybe I should. I should have used um, less stitches. Oh, 12 stitches. Hmm. I think that's one repeat less on this sock. Oh, that would have been perfect. Rip. That's too bad, I guess, for this. Um, yeah, whatever. But then Andrea Maury's episode that came out today, or the day of filming this, which is Friday, um, I forgot which episode it was. Uh, she said that maybe her tighter socks are the ones that um, rip first. Not rip, but they're they get like holes first. But um, not confirmed, of course. Okay, finish that row, and then I'm just going to do these two pearls so that I secure my stitch marker, because I hate losing stitch markers. So yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. I think it's probably going to be a podcast. Um, yeah. Okay. See you. Bye.